We are so mm. thrilled to welcome to Peanut Butter and Biscuits, Zaba. Max, how are you today? It's so great to get a chance to talk to you. Hey, thank you guys. I'm, I'm good and thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, this is such a pleasure, man. And I'll tell you, so at the beginning of season one, we hear that Isaac is like a Rodan uh, statue in cleats. Um, so <laughs> I don't know what Ted would call you at this point. Uh, if that was <laughs> what uh, Cola Bikini is, you are, uh, you know, you got quite the muscle there, man. <laughs> 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 yeah, it yeah. Uh, was. Uh, there was some big shoes to to fill uh, with uh, Zava, and um, th- those muscles I I owe to uh, my trainer Ash Bailey. Uh, shout out to Ash Bailey out there listening. Um, he he really helped me like physically prep for this guy. That's um, so. Yeah, that's so great. Yeah, I owe it to him. Yeah, that's Craig great. asked that question a lot more uh, tactfully. I, I wrote down, is it hard being a real life Greek statue uh, come to life? So, yeah, you know, what, what is it like, you know, being a Renaissance statue in, in real life? Um, you, know, you get a lot of shit from people. Uh, <laughs> can you swear on this podcast? Oh, of course you can. You can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, no I, I, I mean, I'm not trying to walk around looking, uh, you know, like a guy who plays uh, professional soccer all the time because that would just drive my family nuts. <laughs> you know, I generally try to stay in, try to stay in good health um, and just exercise a lot. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. Look at me, I'm blubbering. You, you asked me a question. I don't know how to <laughs> yeah. answer. Well, we kind of put you on the spot. I used to people <laughs> asking me, uh, yeah, what's it like to be a, a Greek statue? So, <laughs> right. like, like, well, we like to that. get off kilter. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't yeah, we yeah. start with uh, our, our normal question that we usually ask? We've asked this a lot of your cast members, but we love to know people's uh, superhero origin stories, sort of like how they got to be in this role and wh- how they uh, came to acting and, and what really inspired that in you. So for you, what has led you down this path and this career path? And so where we'd see you on your, our screens right now. Um, I think, you know, I, I, uh, my parents immigrated here from Poland in 83. And um, I was born in uh, Eisenstadt, Austria, in like a refugee camp while they waited to get let in. So I was about eight months old when I came to Chicago and you know i was raised there it was kind of like a blue collar working class neighborhood um my mom kind of always pushed me into the arts you know i did uh i did i did um saturday school polish school i did piano i got into polish folk dancing when i was like an early teen because my friend said there was a lot of girls so i went off and <laughs> did that um and uh for some reason, I didn't meet any girls. I wonder why when you're dressed in a <laughs> costume and dancing with them, they probably don't think that's cool. Um, and, um, you know, when I was in like uh, Polish school, I, I, rem- I was a bit of the older kid in the class because my Polish writing and reading wasn't up to par with the kids who maybe were uh, who, who lived in Poland for a while and came to the States. And uh, so I would clown around a lot. And uh, thinking I was like too cool for school, like you know, I tell him I'm like, mom, I'm like I'm, I'm an American, I'm here, like why do I have to go to Polish school? Like I have my regular school. Um, and as a punishment, one day the teacher said, well, you like to, you like to clown around, so why don't you're gonna get you're gonna, you're gonna get to recite this uh, poem for the graduation or something. And uh, I kind of was like, all right, I'll show you. And I called my mom and. Uh, she helped me kind of rehearse it and like get the meaning of what it was. And I really understood what it was about. And then when I performed it in front of the, the school, it was weird because I really, I got into it and like connected with what the, the, the writer was saying. And I like, got like, I lost myself in it. And then I remember like the audience was like clapping and they like stood up and were like encore, do it again. And I, and I did it again. And I walked off the stage and I remember that feeling of like, oh, wow, like making an audience like move, making them feel something. And uh, my dad was kind of shocked. He was like, how does like, you know, because I was like maybe 10 or 11. And he was like, how did you, you know, that's, you know, he was just surprised. Um, And I think that's when I first kind of like 
got that sense of telling a story and getting other people to feel something. And then I kind of didn't think about it till about junior year in high school because I wasn't athletic. I didn't play sports. Um, that was never something that was in like our family as immigrants. Like it was, you know, like, again, my mom pushed me toward the arts and then I got into drama there and I saw some kids in senior year doing musicals and theater. And I was like, I can do that. And I started auditioning, getting the plays that's great. And then I kind of got obsessed. That's when I kind of really fell in love with the craft mm. of acting, you know, not, not like, Oh, I'm on stage in high school. Look at me. It was just more like, what is this? I really love exploring this, um, this world theater. And I remember uh, I had a drama teacher, Karen Hall, who was the first person to ever like, look at me and take me seriously as someone who as an actor and took me under her wing and, helped me get into college where I studied acting. And, you know, I, I was watching, <laughs> and I know people laugh about this show now, but for me, like inside the actor's studio. Yeah. You remember that? It was like, very, you yeah. know, it's been SNL skits and everything, but I would watch that like every Sunday. Mm-hmm. It just Lee. We'll talk about like the inspiration for podcasting even like, I mean, that's right. kind of like sort of what spurred a lot of this interview and really finding out, what it was that got actors into their roles or into yeah, their motivations. Yeah. It was so great. Yeah. It was like the first, like one of the, like long form conversations, mm-hmm. especially with actors that uh, a kid like me at that time, after my parents got divorced, I was in the suburbs. So I could like listen and like, really like, what, what does Gene Hackman do? What's he like? And <laughs> right. So I would listen to that show and I'd write down um, every film that they mentioned and I would run to Blockbuster and Blockbuster for all the millennials out there, <laughs> the place you'd go to rent movies and you'd have to bring them back on VHS. So you get a late fee. Mm-hmm. And I would just like uh, devour films and hunt them down and kind of just, that's kind of where I learned what like the, the greats did and everything. Yeah. And, that's then, awesome. and then when I often studied in college and, you know, did the whole drama school thing. Now we need to ask because you brought it up in your love of film. Uh, this is an impossible question to ask answer. Yes. <laughs> so uh, certainly give us as many as you want. But any favorites out there that you really kind of seem drawn to even today? Um, movies or actors? Movies, yeah. Movies, yeah. Oh man, I mean, uh, <laughs> any movie like like class yeah. like stuff. Go for it, whatever. Uh, I mean, you've got like the. I mean, I remember when I watched. When I saw Raging Bull for the first time, that like blew my mind. Um, I just remember watching that over and over again in Taxi Driver. I mean, these are all like trope movies now. I feel like actors mention, but like, I get it. I well, get you have it. a couple mm. of uh, Scorsese fans in that uh, ensemble over there at Ted Lasso, right? I mean, look yeah. at Beard After <laughs> Hours, that entire, that was basically a Scorsese film. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. That one, God, that was such a great episode. <laughs> Ah, vindicated yes i maintain it's one of the best episodes of the series yeah bottleneck it's such a great bottleneck episode you weren't expecting it either um it's nice when you spend some time with those guys too you know um yeah yeah, it is so like i mean you name like charles lawton like that is a guy that's like almost extinct in the member i don't know if you know yeah yeah you know who he is witness for the prosecution baby Mm. yeah you know um hunchback of Notre dame and i mean that guy was amazing. I mean, Ben Kingsley, um, oh my God, Sidney Portier and yes. Enzo Watt. I mean, the greats, the greats. I mean, the guys that when I was a kid and, you know, that everyone just looked up to him and was like, what are you doing? How do you do that? Um, Gene Hackman is just, yeah. Like, I think Dustin great. Hoffman once said Gene Hackman, like, he's so good. Like, they kicked him out because they didn't think he was even acting. Like, yeah. he was just too natural. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I can go on and on, but, um, I'm glad you brought up the, uh, the classic films there. We, uh, I'm a big, you know, fan of classic films as well. And Mm. I feel like those don't get as much play, but man, they still are timeless. You watch them today, like some of those really all time classics and they still get you like you just like I just mentioned their witness for the prosecution. That is like, you know, it's a courtroom drama from the fifties, but if you watch that, you are riveted the whole time. Like it's just amazing writing and amazing acting that really is timeless. Yeah. And you mean Paul Newman, the verdict. Yes. Right. Yes. I mean, I mean, I think like, for like young actors, like I think building your taste is so important when you start out, you know, if, Mm. 
if all you know of acting is, you know, you know, and there's great acting on like, but if you don't know the classics and the greats and you don't know who Paul Newman is right now, or you don't know what Raging Bull is, or you've never seen like The Godfather or something mm. like you can't, how do you know film? How do you know like the story of how like these actors transformed what it means to personify someone on screen? Yeah. Look at us. We're doing like an actor's studio. <laughs> this is great. Yes, and I love we're it. just supposed to talk about Ted Lasso. <laughs> well, hey, look at that. Transitions yeah. uh, transitions are plenty. So that's, of course, how you got into, you know, acting and stuff. And by the way, congrats, uh, standing elevation and encore on your very first performance. Um, but um, how did uh, how did you come? It took into a while Lasso? to get another one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <right? laughs> well, how did you come into the Lasso orbit, though? Talk to us a little bit about the process uh, of landing the role of Zava. Yeah. Um, it, very, very, very random. And uh, I, it, so after like the pandemic, my wife, um, who's also an actor, uh, teaching Lackman, she um, she was in London doing a film, Jurassic World, and we were in that bubble, that hotel bubble. Mm -hmm. And we kind of really like we were here for a while. We were in the hotel, but there was a week where we had a break and we explored London. I had studied abroad here, too, my junior year with drama school at the Globe Theater. Mm. And um, we kind of fell in love with it and we came back to LA and then something like popped in her head after like lockdown started to lift. She was like, let's, let's get out. Let's just go, go to London and stay there for three months and rent the house. And I was like, what? You're, you're crazy. What are you talking about? And, you know, she's like, she's good at it. She convinced me to do it. And so we did, we came out to London just for three months, just to get out of LA and just, you know, have an adventure and, 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 you know, reconnect with the world and whatnot. Um, and then my manager called and said, I got, I, I got an appointment for you for, uh, with Theo Park. Mm. She wants to read you for Ted Lasso. And I was like, yeah, Ted Lasso. Sure. <laughs> um, you know, by then at this point, two seasons have come out and I mean, my wife and family, like, like everyone else in America, we were huge fans. Right. Um, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just send it my way. You know, they, they mentioned something and then, you know, either it never comes your way or whatever. And I get the appointment and I look at the breakdown and it's described as, you know, one of the world's top strikers, like the best of the best. Um, and in the description, it said, must be good at soccer. Please send a tape of yourself. <laughs> playing soccer or football, excuse me, uh, for all the people in England listening. Um, and then right away, I was like, my, in my head, I was just like, oh, I can't, and I can't do this. <laughs> like, I don't play soccer. I can't, I've never played soccer. And I saw the show and I saw like Christo in these wide shots looking amazing. And I, and you read about them. I used to play uh, semi-pro in Mexico and yeah. Bill Dunster, you know, yeah, you, you hear about Phil like nailing that shot from the center line. <laughs> yeah, line, yeah. Line, you know, yeah, yeah, like and, <laughs> yeah. And you're like, that show these guys know how to play soccer, you know? And I mean, you could say, oh, well, it's edited well, make sure, but like you can't cheat those wide shots. Mm -mm. Um, and you read about it. And some of those guys, like your collar can play Mo Hosh. My God, like those guys mm -hmm. can really play. Um, so anyway, I, I got like, I got in my head and, um, just kind of talked myself out of doing it. And I called my manager. He's like, I can't, I can't play soccer. He's like, can we say you played soccer <laughs> in high school? And I was like, no, you can't say I played soccer in high school. He's like, did you play any soccer? He's like, cause you're athletic. I was like, I look athletic, but I'm just <laughs> don't put me in a position where I lie to people saying I play soccer. And then they expect me to go out on the field and you know, dribble the ball for uh, <laughs> do tricks, especially with this role. Um, so I was literally on, like, I was really close to just calling him back and saying, "I just pass on this." Like, they can get anyone they want. Season three, it's Ted Lasso. Like, you literally call a Premier League player and ask them to play this part if they wanted to do that, or mm -hmm. they can find someone anywhere in the world who can do this. Um, and then I called. Like, my wife was like, "Well, just look, call your friend Damo in London." Uh, in Australia, pardon me. And I just called him and he kind of was just, he's like the, I've said in past interviews, he's like the Ted Lasso positive guy in our friend group. Mm. Like, oh. He's like, no, don't be crazy, Maximilian. 
you know, like just highlight what you got. You're Polish, speak Polish, you know, you're in shape. Just go to the park, take your shirt off and do some workouts and, 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 and kick the ball in slow motion. It's going to look, it's going to look badass. Don't worry. Just like do it. You can do the part. And he kind of talked me into it. And so that's what I did. I kind of did a tape. I did the sides that came with it. Um, and the character I got, I kind of, kind of, kind of understood what they were kind of about. I watched some interviews and stuff. And I went to the park with my wife in London here and it was like 45 degrees and like a idiot. I just took my shirt off and started doing like in character, like workouts. So like I, I jumped down a tree and started doing pull-ups on a branch. I found a log and I was squatting it. Um, <laughs> Very rocky. I, of you. <laughs> yeah. I was doing, I was doing these like uh, soccer drill warmups, you know, winking at the camera pushups, like just in character as if there were like someone was like documenting like how the super superstar soccer player works out. Um, and then we improvised a little interview with her where I did some Polish stuff and uh, very quick, but like pretty funny. And I said, that's it. That's what I can bring to this, you know? And that's awesome. so I sent it off and took about a month before I got the call saying, you know, you got the part. And I didn't know this, but my manager said, you, you, you've been in, Obviously, this is what I heard. I have no idea. You'd have to ask the, you know, like Jason and those guys. Like, well, hopefully, we get the opportunity to do that. (laughs) Yeah, we will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, but I I heard it was making its way up the food chain. They just my reps didn't want to call me because they didn't want to like get me um, excited too early or expectations or whatever they called it. And um, like about a week before I found out, they I said, "How's that? Did that tape get any traction? Like, did did we make fan of casting? Because at the end of the day, like." The job as an actor is just to do the best work you can and and make them a fan. Like you can't control it's out of your hands, right? Someone mm-hmm. can cast you because or not cast you because oh, that looks like my ex boyfriend. You know, I don't want I don't, yeah. that that doesn't work for me. Um, so yeah, and then a week later, I got the call saying, you know, Jason approved you and your Zava, and it was about like two, a week and a half from Christmas. So it was a really really <laughs> great Christmas uh, Christmas that year. Yeah, that's that yeah. is that is so great. You know, you're, oh, not you're the everywhere, only... man. You're everywhere now. <laughs> right, right. And um, you're not the only cast member that mentioned to us that they had to uh, kind of catch up to speed with some soccer because Mo was saying that now he like studies keepers because he wants to make sure that he looks, you know, better for the part when those wide shots happen and all of that. So right, um, right, for sure. But uh, this is all so great. So you're now part of this ensemble. This is really a well-oiled machine. I mean, you know, it's winning Emmys left and right. And so you're in an interesting spot with this character. You have to come in and be basically this God among men uh, on screen, but you're the new kid on the block when it comes to the ensemble. So I'm wondering, can you walk us through sort of the experience of going on to set and uh, how this cast and crew sort of reacted to you kind of joining the team? Yeah. um, Well, when I first got, after I got the part, I didn't really, it was about, was it December, January? I didn't walk on to the lot or set till end of February. Mm. Um, so I was kind of like, you got the part, great. And um, I didn't really hear, like, I'd, no one contacted me from the writer's room or anything to, like, discuss Zava and, like, hear the plans. You know, I'm, like, I'm kind of learned now that they were just busy writing. Mm. Um and uh, so on, on my own, I just hired a soccer coach to like, just break me like <laughs> on my own. I said, look, I'm a clean slate. Like talk to me like I'm four years old. And um, I just did that with him three days a week while starting to train, going to the gym and everything. Um, Cause you know, after the holidays, you put on some pounds um, mm-hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and um, so I started doing that on my own and then, by February, I walked in and, um, and it couldn't have been more lovely. Um, everyone was so welcoming. Like the first person I met was Jackie Levy, the costume designer, and she was so collaborative on Zava's look and was interested in what I thought and how I felt about some of the, the looks and stuff. Um, and I, I remember the first day I met the, the guys on the team, I was in my dressing room and um, the, I think someone told them that I was there and they just like, knocked on my door and all introduced themselves and yeah. and also like from like a fan's 
a fan's point of view, like just imagine like you live in the States, you come to London, suddenly you're, you you have to stay longer. And then you're on in the West London film studios where they shoot Ted Lasso. And it's become such a cultural phenomenon in the U S and then you're there and then you're knocking on on the, someone's knocks on your door, but it's like, it's Christo. (laughs) And then um, Jamie Tart. And, and you know, you've got David and Collar and all these characters you've been watching and they're all just like, and Tahib. And there couldn't have been more love there and welcoming. There was no like sizing you up and ego or anything like that. Um, and right away, that just made me feel a lot more comfortable uh, being there. Because, you know, you come in and, you know, they're, you know you're, you're playing like the top striker in the world. Mm-hmm. And... Um, but, you know, I think that he just reminds like, we're all, we're all actors here. This is our job. And they they took me in right in the family. And I, it really helped me just like feel comfortable playing the part, walking on the set and doing my job. Um, and they did such a great job, you know, and uh, like they did half the acting for me because of the way they behaved around my character, you know, which is really important, you know, like you've. Like there was a Helen Mirren one said, like, you know, when you're playing the king or the queen, like it's the other actors that do the, the acting for you. Mm-hmm. You know, you're playing someone super high status. Um, everyone was fantastic. And then the day. Yeah, that uh, that scene where you first walk into the locker room is just pure gold. Uh, well, like because you're right. Like I, I find myself watching everyone else uh, except for you. <laughs> and it's particularly <laughs> particularly Brett's reaction because like you don't expect Roy yeah. Kent to have this reaction. So when Roy has the reaction to Zava that he does, you're just like, oh man, this guy's for real because yeah. Roy doesn't yeah. like accept fools ever. You know. So no, I, I mean thought, like the moment he that you know what I I love like Brett Goldstein's reaction in episode two, when they do that whole who's on first bit, yeah, he gets angry. And then he, they say, and he really, he hears like what Zava's, Zava's going to play here. And he like almost chokes yeah. on, like you see the younger boy, like who's yeah. a fan of the guy, like, just like, I like, that was the most beautiful, honest, like brilliant choice that I was like, wow. And it said so much about Zava with the way Roy reacted. And yeah, of course, in, in three, two, like that nod there was kind of like, yeah, I, I wanted to make sure to like, you know, we, we all want to make sure like Zava acknowledges Roy Kent, you yeah. know, a little bit, a little bit longer than everyone else. Cause they have a little bit of a history together. Yeah. And there's also that moment uh, in the office when you're looking at the board and like the coaches are like debating who should talk to you. And I love it that like, you know, Ted looks over at Roy and Roy literally is just like, no, you're the coach. Like he won't even, <laughs> he, he can't even like talk to Zava because he just like feels that much. Like you said, the little boy thing coming out there. <laughs> but yeah. It, yeah. Uh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, no, no. Yeah. It's um, it, it the first few weeks on that show i was um i was like i was like pinching myself and reminding myself like just you know it's about the work max it's about the work because you know um you're like that scene in chelsea like i met hannah after i filmed that zava's entrance and she was so lovely and like disarming and charming um and then brendan and jason you know and you have these moments with them in the locker room scene and stuff and it's just it's you know it's it's work it's being a professional and they were terrific but it's also um as a fan of something you have to kind of put that in the back of your head too you yeah. know um and you admire their work as I well um, I, I really appreciated the back and forth um kind of just monitoring our social media even yesterday and the back and forth you and hannah had uh with each other this makes your as a fan makes your heart sing a little bit that you see like these interactions between the cast members and everything else. So um, they all just seem so wonderful. And and we've only heard that from so much of the cast that this chemistry, maybe reason why the show works so well. And it seems like they're really part Mm -hmm. of this team is because that chemistry on set is there, not just from the actors, but from everyone in production all the way through um, Jason and Bill kind of on down. Uh, And uh, it's just really great to hear that from a, a fan's perspective. But I'm wondering about like, walk me through the last two weeks for you, because 
you know, you sort of had to kind of keep a little bit quiet about Zava. Uh, you, of course, were announced and, you know, people could see that you were going to be joining the cast, but no one really knew who this character was. And then here, all of a sudden, you get introduced to the world. Um, all their uh, lasso social media, all of that is kind of blowing up now. So I just wonder, you personally, like, how has this last two weeks been for you? I mean, clearly you're an actor. You've been on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You've been on so many other projects, but like, this is probably a bit of a different level, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the last year kind of sucked because I had I couldn't talk about it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> outside of like my family and like, you know, people like your reps and stuff, like who knew you were on it. But like, you know, like the whole time during filming, like, you know, me and the guys got along so well, like we became friends. We'd hang out in London, do stuff. You know, I have so many great photos in my phone of all of us like doing getting together. Like, you know, they came to my birthday last April. Um, and it's great, but you can't like you can't post it, you can't talk about it, you know, you can't, you know, you just have to like, you know, I, and you respect it because they want this character to be mysterious and stuff. So um the last year kind of sucked because you can't, you know, and they would they wouldn't like you couldn't even announce the casting really. When it happened, they 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 wanted to keep that on the wraps too, which is fine. Um, so it was like the lat leading up to the, the last two weeks, I was just wondering like what, and like if I like they I got invited to the premiere, and I was like, but they no one even knows that I'm on the show. Like yeah, <laughs> like are we gonna like say that I play Zava or you guys just want me to show up? Um, you know, because I was like then the people are like who the hell who the hell are you? Why are you on this blue carpet? <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, I think like, you know, the, the press knew and like the, the red blue carpet thing was like a, an amazing night and it was so fun to see everyone and then see the like t finished product, the first two episodes and Jason, everyone. And um, yeah, it made it all worth it. It made it all yeah. worth it. And I kind of like it now that it, it wasn't talked about too much and everything was kind of kept under wraps because you, the, the fans get to experience it kind of like, um, like everyone else like when did this where is this coming from like who the fuck is this guy you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. ted lasso's character too like who's zava yep. yeah um so i think it worked it worked yeah it's like a terrible awesome secret you can't talk about with anyone or share the fact and all you want to do is be like guys i'm playing this fucking crazy dude on the show you can't you know <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Well, for sure. yeah, it's 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 quite an amazing character. Um, and to talk about that character just a little bit, like the first episode that we really get a lot with Zava is episode three, of course. And there's a, a lot of enigmaticness, you know, of course, with the character. But I also see some hints of like a lot of genuineness that I don't think you would expect from a character like that, from a prototypical like prima donna football player. Um, you know, like and the one that I called out in our review of episode three was when you're at Sam's restaurant, you're talking with Will the kit man. Like you're literally going out of your way to like talk with him and drink with him. And of course you mentioned him as the most important person in the room, in the locker room. Um, so it seems like, you know, we recognize a character like this, but I think there's a lot more depth to this character. So is there, is there anything you can tell us about like insights of how you play this character? Are we really going to get to dive into the psyche of Zava and kind of, peel back some onion layers on this character as we continue to to see more of him in season three um well i can tell you what i like learning about these guys like i read i read um what is that zlatan ibrahimovic's book i'm football i watched oh, yeah. um hours of documentaries and interviews um everything i could about like just to sop up like some of the inspirations for the role like eric Cantona yeah um you know zaydan uh um messy i mean i don't think he's like he's not like a messy um but i just i learned very quickly that especially with guys like zava and you know i, I know a lot of people are saying oh this guy is like a is zlatan but like you read a book like zlatan's book was eye-opening to me because all the players and the and the teams he's worked for had nothing but amazing things to say about him. And I learned quickly that who he was in the locker room was not how he presented to the press. Mm. And I think for me, it was, you know, I approached it like I was going to play a, 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 a drama and like a biopic. And then I come on set and I'm there to help tell their story and you just trust fall and, you know, you serve what they want to do with the character. Um, but I wanted to kind of find 
definitely find out why he is the way he is. And you have to kind of not judge this guy, but try and figure out like, why does he present this way? And when is he that way? So I thought it, it was important that the moments in the locker room, it's genuine in Rebecca's office. It's genuine. Like these guys are like, when you meet them, you, they're just talking to you and mm-hmm. they're, they're, all their attention is on you. And that's what makes them likable and charismatic and why people are drawn to them. And a lot of these guys kind of like when they, especially like the bigger personalities, they, the press is like a little mouse to them. Yeah. Right. The press yeah. needs them more than they need them. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the field and on the, in the locker room, they're there to try and make the team better and, and win, you know, um, Brendan Hunt told me something. He was like, um, he says, you know, like when Michael Jordan went off to play for the white Sox, right. He was part of their team. He rode the team bus. It's like, but his hotel was different because he's Michael Jordan. Right. You know, and that's kind of like the, the dynamic they wanted it to capture in that show, you know, like his <laughs> takes up a corner of the locker room. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but he, when he's talking to them, he, he, like these guys have to be likable. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's to be one note. And then, yeah. you know, yeah. that fans love to hate them if they're not on the team, you know? And I think that was important for me to just be like, what makes him tick? Why do are they like that? And like reading up on these guys, you go beyond the headlines and YouTube videos. Yeah. And, and that's kind of where I found the key. And like, Zlatan would always smile. He would say something really cocky, but then he'd, you know, look away and just give a little smile, like a wink saying, I fucking know. I'm like, yeah, uh, <laughs> well, I know that, like, what you I'm know, saying, but when we talk about episode uh, three, um, that was one of the lines and it, every, every line in this show was written so intentionally. And like, it's um, the, the line that I loved that you deliver is the um, I'm really excited to be here line to the coaches because like that to me, humanizes that character a little bit because like you can get this kind of sense that he's just all about knowing that he's self-absorbed and that he is the best uh, God's gift to football but in that moment like he's still saying you know I have like a, a genuine excitement to be part of this team and I, I just love I love how they ended up uh, how they ended up doing that I should mention too that you know when um, we started talking uh, originally a, a few weeks ago I mentioned that even though we are Illinois boys we are both Packers fans and I do yes. see a little bit of Aaron maybe in this uh, but you mentioned you're a Bears fan so we won't uh, yeah. let that divide us uh, right now okay. Um, we'll it's okay and right now, we both probably have mutual feelings about Aaron Rodgers. So uh, that uh, makes you feel better. We're about to be very bad for a very long time. So. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, welcome to the welcome to the uh, Bears fans world. Yeah, um, I actually did reach out. Here. I think in the middle of last season, and I was yeah. just like, guys, I don't, I don't know how to handle this. And a lot of my Bears fans, uh, friends, were very sympathetic to me, which yes. was which was very nice. <laughs> um, we've got a couple of things that we wanted. We want to be really respectful of your time here. Uh, we have a couple of things no, that we okay. wanted to just sort of let you know about sort of rapid fire and things. Um, we, of course, are part of this larger Ted Lasso community. And there is a really cool subset of it. And I don't know if you've ever heard of this called Med Lasso. And it's all the doctors and nurses and medical professionals that wow. watch this show. And in particular, uh, Dr. Mark Shapiro actually does a podcast all about this. And we've become good friends with Mark. So I mentioned this interview to him and he said, that we would be the only people to mention this to you, he's sure, but that the <laughs> medical community right now is blowing up about the asparagus scene and whether or not that is physically possible to do, to <laughs> be able to stand that long uh, and relieve yourself. So <laughs> not really a question there. Just so you know, you got doctors talking, man. Doctors are, <laughs> are, are aghast. <laughs> Yeah, I remember I read I remember I read that scene and I I was dying dying and there was like there was dialogue exchange between me and Hannah in that scene originally. Ah. Yeah, and and then uh the day before we shot it Jason came up and said, "Hey man, I think I want to keep Zav a little more mysterious." I'm thinking of like of cutting his responses to Hannah in my head. I was like, "Oh shit, I suck. He's, I'm, they're going to fire me." Like, "What do you mean? Like we haven't even rehearsed, you haven't even heard it out loud. Like it's really funny on paper." Um but it was brilliant move. It was genius yeah. because like Zava kept his status and Hannah was so good in that moment and she delivered. I just had to, you know, stay still and try not to break character because she was so funny in that asparagus line. And then yeah, the the water, the peeing underneath that was just, I mean, 
Yeah. It was was genius. But that's the thing with these guys. I just want to mention, like, they, they, to what I said earlier, I didn't mention it, but like coming on the show, like no one's resting on their laurels. And that, that was kind of really inspiring to see, Um, you know, here's season three, two seasons, accolades, awards, you know, best comedy, whatnot. And everyone's working really hard, trying to give the best product, trying to tell the story and be true to it. Um, Hannah was just like, I just showed up, show up and try not to fuck this up. You know, she said that to me because like the pressure and stuff and Jason and Brendan and Brett and Joe, they're like doctors on set. Like what they, they take what they do very seriously and they, they leave or like, 10% for like inspiration in the moment. And a lot of that stuff changes in front of the camera or the day before the scene with, uh, in Rebecca's office, all of us in that room, we woke up that morning, call time 6.00 AM. And we had an email saying, Oh, we're not shooting the scene that we're planned to. It's this scene from an episode that we haven't even released the script from. And we all show up having to memorize it that morning in our makeup chairs and then Jason fills us in on what happens in the episode and where we are in the moment. And, and then we go and freaking shoot it. Um, and that's hats off to him because he knows the story so well. He knows every character so well that you can just be okay with that. And then you have a cast like that that can just, that they're at the top of their game, like Hannah and Jeremy and, and Juno um, and oh, Jason. And then- so and you're these, just these like, first few, you know, God. if you're not having this for a year and a half, these first few episodes yeah. back, it's just like they have these people back, and they and they just continually, like particularly Hannah. I mean, clearly she's won Emmy at this point for the role, and but like the way that she's delivering these lines between this um, this fight about Rupert, but kind of wanting to move forward, it's just mm. absolutely. I mean, it's just like stellar. She's she's a you all are. I mean, like the the way that this show is crafted and put together. Uh, is just so wonderful and i think that that's why it has such a huge impact on people for sure um one of the other things that people ask about uh, that they wanted us to talk about was this whole big breath exhale scene <laughs> they want to know is that really your lung capacity did you do that yeah. all in one take <laughs> you're gonna break the magic I, here for no 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 i'm trying <laughs> that so i remember I, I remember i was working on that scene and i think i get I gotta give credit. My wife was like, just try and breathe as loud as you can. Yeah. So I, <laughs> as long as you can. Um, so I kind of w- wanted to keep that because I thought it might work. And then um, I did, I did. I tried to, I tried to hold it as long as we could. And then, I mean, that's the straight man stuff. And then it's Jason behind me trying to like keep up with the breath and everyone else opening their eyes, like looking around. And I was just like slow and steady, just holding as long <laughs> as you can, took a deep, 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 deep breath. Um, so yeah, that, yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's another I, 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 that was a, yeah, that was on purpose. It's another scene too, where Every it's scene. so hilarious to watch how everyone else is doing a deep breath in that scene. Like, it's just like the poses that they do, like when they're doing it, like Brendan is especially hilarious in that he does some kind of like Zen thing in the middle of everything. Cause of course he did. It's coach beard. <laughs> Brendan's physical comedy. He's so good. And it's like, again, like you're just in such good hands, you know, yeah. he, he would come up to me and say like, Hey, do do the head thing but just go a little slower and then faster and like oh you know when you raise like raise your arms this way and you're like oh yeah and it's just the physical comedy and the timing that he has is is amazing and it goes to i mean if you ever like everyone should go and like youtube brendan hunt and see his like hula hoop stuff on youtube which is what why they wrote that into um that his bottleneck episode like these guys are master comedy craftsman you know and um, another chicago boy too oh yeah crazy. another chicago boy yeah yeah seriously there you go but he's the, the midwest man. the he's midwest Sox, is man. well the midwest is well represented here in ted lasso i'll tell you what it is like, indeed uh, it is it indeed is yeah um so the last one that we have you talked about like all of your soccer uh training that you did to gear up for this with some of the shots and things like that that you've had to do, is there anything like uh, any memory of those uh, first scenes that you 
really nailed it. You really feel like, you know what, like <laughs> I took my, I took my practice seriously and I was able to get it onto the pitch or uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh, that, um, that was working with um, Dan, Pedro and Cass who were, uh, Pedro was the director on the football blocks. Um, uh, Cass was like the soccer choreographer and Dan was ADing that and also helping with the soccer. Uh, those guys were there and they said, look, <laughs> they said, look, look, it's clear you can't play football from the tape, <laughs> no. but that's okay. He's like, you take care of the swagger. We'll take care of the football. Oh, I was, perfect. <laughs> I was like, aye, aye, captain. Um, and they did. And they did. And like, I did the stunts myself, like the soccer kicks. Like I got the receipts for that. Like we rehearsed those. We, we, we practiced those. Um, you know, I drilled those because I was like, I, I, I can do that. Like that, like I can do. Um, so that we, that what you see on camera is like me doing that stuff with the help of the amazing crew and everyone, you know, making it look even more epic. Um, and that was, yeah, that was just the uh, football blocks. And there was like rehearsals in between shooting days on the field with Cass, just running the different kicks and the headers and the scorpion kick. Dude, the um, scorpion kick look it looked especially awesome. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I'm I'm so like proud of uh, working with them and like executing that stuff. It was so fun. I remember when, we're, when you're shooting a football block here. This was like early, late winter, early spring, so it's not warm. So I made sure I was like, I'm gonna do. I uh, like I rehearsed as much as like they would give me time to do, so I could just like get it out of the way in like two, three takes. Four, basically, it's not because max can't do the thing it's just like uh let's get the, a better angle or like we got to go again and something light whatever you know and so um i tried because we're all standing there and you're not playing a full game you're like stop and start then st you run a rehearsed play then wait for 30 minutes to reset and like everyone's like freezing because you can't you're not running around playing a game where the body heats there so it, it gets right. chilly but I can't yeah. complain. I heard season one was brutal. They heard they filmed those in November. Oh, well, I gotta um, say, man, you can ask those form, guys what that was like. Yeah, your form on the scorpion and the bicycle kick were fantastic, and they gave you an amazing superhero header shot, uh, which you can just you know replay constantly um, forever and ever. Uh, because that shot <laughs> there was, was a tramp. There was a trampoline involved in that. I, okay. that was a, there's a trampoline, <laughs> and then and I don't you know look. For everyone listening, the magic happens between action and cut, and everything else is craft. You know, and yeah, that great. you still yeah. have really good form on the on the push on the head. Right. right. Yeah, I remember the guys like saying it's in the neck, it's in the neck. Um, that's what sells it. But the ball was on like a string to give me uh... something to aim to. Because <laughs> if you if you shot this, if you tried to really like, I know there's that video of um Phil nailing that that kick, right? <laughs> right. And that is a, a testament to just you know, his, his abilities. Um, but if you tried to do that with every soccer scene, you'd, you'd still right. be filming, you know, and it's too much time and money. So, you know, um, yeah, you try to do everything. And, it, but it's, again, it's to help tell the story. You're trying to tell a great story and make people feel excited. You're not trying to film a soccer match. Well, you've definitely made everyone feel excited, especially in episode three there. Um, I have a completely ridiculous question for you here before we wrap up, but um, I noticed yeah. my research. Of course, you uh, mentioned your wife there, Dykin, I believe is her Dishin. name. Right? Dishin. Um, Dishin, yeah. Of course, she's been in, in so many things, but I noticed that you were both on the same series of Shameless and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but you were never on at the same time um, in any of the seasons. Yeah. Was that intentional or were you guys trying to get on at the same time? uh no it's kind of weird how that that happened like it's <laughs> it's not intentional we don't say oh let's try to get on this show uh, right. <laughs> i don't know i guess so what it's what happens when like two actors uh marry each other and then live in la and then stick around the business you know um she was on shield first yeah and, season two yeah <laughs> yeah and then they they brought me on at a different season um and then shameless was yeah that was completely crazy it's probably because you're in la long enough you get to know the same casting directors and mm -hmm. then they get to know you and you kind of just and shoot stuff that shoots in la is casting out of that same pool 
Um, but yeah. I mean, it's a blessing. We pinch ourselves like to be on two Apple show, like severance is so good. Yeah. Severance is, if you guys have not um, seen severance, she is amazing in it, but an amazing show. <laughs> yeah. And like, we sometimes were like here on severance. I got to be on Ted Lasso. I was like, fuck me, man, this is fantastic. <laughs> like we're so lucky and we're just like grateful and like, you know, going to her stuff in LA and she got to come to the premiere. It was yeah, it's it's really nice. And so we just try to enjoy it. And, you know, and then you come home and, you know, we have a kid and it's good to be grounded. You know, you got to go walk your dog, pick up his poop, you know, take out yep. the trash, take your daughter to school. And I think that's it, it's good. Like being married and having a family has helped me just keep everything in perspective and kind of real, you know, and not let yourself get lost in the clouds. That's so Absolutely. great. So I've got a couple last questions here. First, um, we've asked a lot of your castmates this because this show has done so much, I think, for the mental health of a lot of the viewers mm -hmm. to really focus on that idea of mental health. And so I'm just wondering if you have, I, like, for example, I, uh, I've i told this to all the cast members. My listeners are like, why are you bringing this up again? Uh, I started running during the pandemic because Ted Lasso was a motivation for that. I ended up losing about 70 pounds. And then I, I just what? did a- Wow, just man. My, Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That's thank amazing. You. I, um, I just completed my first marathon in uh, mm -hmm. January. So uh, it was wow. it was a trip for sure. But what is it that you do kind of for your own mental health? Is there something that like, is it, is it working out? Is it, um, you know, watching inside the actor studio? What, what is it that, that kind of gets for you? Um, but I mean, I don't watch the act actor studio anymore that um, for me, it's um, I love, like, I like reading and I fitness has become kind of my daily habit and it, it's going to stay that way till I die. Like <laughs> I, I strength train four days a week. That's my thing. Um, you know, yeah. Like watching a, watching a good movie. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not big on like going out and, and clubs and, and spending a lot of time in bars and stuff. And I don't know if that's just comes with like age and getting, you know, children, being, I would think children is where that comes with. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, I like a good, like a good glass of scotch and like a fucking great movie and all of it. I'm like, that's great. You know? And I love going to the movies still. Like I yeah. like seeing that, but and I, I love going to the movies by myself. Even I'll go to the movies by myself and just, um, to catch something, but mental health is, is really important. You know, like I think I've, I became more aware of, especially in that, I mean, you know, an actor's mental health is really, really important, man. Cause you, you have that ego and that voice. And I just like, I, I, I did a lot of self reading about, you know, gratitude and being in the moment and present with everyone that's around you, you know? Um, and, I read the um what was that what was that book um Power of Now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that stuck out to me that he said is um you you have that ego and your job is not to try and wrestle it to the ground. It's just to just even acknowledging it, you know, that's you know, it's like, hey, thank you. I know you want better for me, or you know, I know that you're looking out, but like just even acknowledging that that voice in your head is that voice in your head, and it doesn't mean that's who you are. Um, that's kind of helped me stay grounded and my wife's the same way. We just try to stay positive, you know, and feel good. And as an actor's job, I think, uh, in between work, your job is to stay happy and positive and grateful, you know, cause otherwise you can't attract anything into your life. If you're negative and jaded, um, I, I think that just attracts more of that. Yeah. You yeah, know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. What a, what a great message. Um, our, our last question that we usually like to ask is that, you know, you are going to be doing a lot of these interviews uh, in the very yeah. near future, and you've already done a bunch of interviews as well. Um, but we like to just kind of allow for an open forum and say, is there a story that you always want to talk about, but you're never asked about? Or is there a message that you have that you'd always like to share, but you're not given the opportunity to? So just kind of an open forum to, uh, to close us out here. Oh man, you're putting me on the spot. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Um a message or something, a story. Um and I mean you shared a, a bunch today. I yeah, love, I love yeah. That. I feel I like oh my burn my cards. I wish I knew this was coming. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I I love the story of you uh on that stage and that inspiration that hits you. Man, that is 
that's uh that's theatrical it's cinematic is what it is you know i I think like don't don't let anyone um don't let anyone kind of tell you what you what you like what you can't do like it's your life and you got one shot i mean i like i haven't done a lot of comedy like if you like my resume isn't filled with multi-cams and sitcoms and stuff um i remember there was like um I finished The Walking Dead uh, after like months in Richmond, Virginia. And I was like in LA and, you know, Walking Dead, he's like, like, you know, it's very serious and like, like everyone's dying and you're dying and people you love are dying. And um, I remember (laughs) just sitting, you know, like in my back here, I was like, I'll have to do a comedy one day. And like the next thing I got was not just any comedy was this comedy right yeah. yeah and i think right. like the power of what your thoughts which become your words which become your actions is really really important mm. you know and so if anything i just like talk about what you want to people don't talk about what you don't want you know i'm not you know and i'm not perfect like me and my wife try to keep each other in check like you know if i'm complaining about she's like you know just shut up talk about what you want not what you don't want you know like what would you want to happen like what do you you know, feel good. And I think if we could just surround ourselves with people like that, like, like Damo, if I hadn't called Damo, I was literally ready to, I, my finger was on the button to call my manager and say, I think we should pass. Cause I'm, I was too embarrassed to tape myself doing soccer. Yeah. Um, so I think that is a, to me is a testament of like being around positive people who support you, who, if you like, are vulnerable enough and say like, I really would like to try this. They don't laugh at you or just go, yeah, yeah. You know, they're like, go do it. You know, I think the more you have that in your life, just the happier you'll be. And the more you'll let yourself grow as a person. Well, Um, Max, this has been, uh, yeah, this has been absolutely incredible to get a chance to talk to you. And I can't wait to see what's ahead for Zava later in season three. And I'll tell you, uh, open invite. Clearly, if you ever want to come talk classic films with us, please let us know. Oh, we um, got a whole uh, classic podcast, uh, man. <laughs> it is. Uh, I do. I'd love is, to. I'd love to. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. It is. So we got to bring I mean, them. Honestly, we got to bring those back. It can't just be a film school class. You know, oh, no, college we got for credit, right? We got our classics host. He's uh, covering the TCM uh, festival uh, here in a couple of weeks. We got him out there to uh, cover that. Um, so we're trying. We're trying our best, man. Greg Goldstein has his podcast, uh, Film to be buried oh, with like amazing show amazing show amazing yeah. show like he's just a like a savant when it comes to movies yeah it it's, it's, great. it's yeah. great how he it's great how that show um makes it so attractive to go and check out all those films because you yes. listen to the actor or the filmmaker or, or you know whatever um who you like and then you're like oh man that's those are the films that they like so i'm gonna go check these out because i haven't seen them before so he's doing the good work for sure there but but man, it has been uh, just a, a pleasure. And I uh, just want to say thank you for your art and creativity that you put out into the world because it's, it's helping all of us. Um, thank you, sure. guys. So, thank that's, you. that's so kind of you to say. And I'm, I'm, I'm honored and, and happy that you guys uh, wanted to bring me on. Um, and I hope, hope you guys uh, have great success and you get to interview everyone you've ever wanted to. I appreciate that. I'll well, we can check a, a big job. one off the list right now, sir, with you. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah there's, 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 big, there's big ones out there. There's big guys out there. There's big <laughs> people out there. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Front Row Network, a proud Community Voices member of National Public Radio, Illinois. For more from the Front Row Network, including our articles or our other dozens of shows, visit thefrontrownetwork.com or nprillinois.org slash programs slash Front Row Network. You can also find us on social media by searching for the Front Row Network on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, and on Twitter at Front Row Reviews with a Z.